Okay guys, so welcome back to another video and today what we're going to be talking about is my attitude towards learning Russian. Now when I've spoken about languages on this channel before, I've been very sort of very def uh, defiant about my attitude towards Russian or uh, not, not, not Russian, towards just grammar generally. Um, so I think grammar is most of the time, if you just want to acquire the language, it's a real no-go. I really don't believe it's very useful to learn too much grammar, to, to cram your brain with, with grammar. I don't think it's really, I don't think it really works, to be quite honest. You know, I love learning grammar for its own sake. I think it's really interesting. It gives you a very, profa very profound knowledge of, of the language. Um, but you don't need to learn it for um, for just, just understanding languages. And... At the moment, I'm sort of learning Russian. I'm not very disciplined about it. Like, it's, it's kind of fun hobby at the moment. Uh, so I'm not really sort of taking it super seriously. Um, but I'm, but I, I am learning it. And, and the, the way that I'm doing it is, I think it's a perfect way to show you guys like my attitude towards learning languages because Russian is incredibly grammar heavy. There's so much grammar in Russian, you know, there are the declensions, you know, there's really weird stuff about the verbs, you know, um, perfective or imperfective, you know, um, so many weird things like that that you just don't really understand in, in for an English speaker, it sounds really foreign and it sounds really difficult. Um, and I'm just going to show you my attitude towards learning Russian um, in light of this, you know, because you think, oh, you surely need to learn a little bit of... Russian to like really understand all the complexities of the, uh, you need to learn a little bit of grammar to understand these complexities. Um, but I'm going to show you my system for, for learning Russian and it's just exposure. So I don't know any endings for cases. I don't know any like conjugations for verbs. All I'm doing is this practice. And, you know, I'm still at a very beginner level with Russian. Like I say, I'm not taking it super seriously. But even if I was taking it more seriously, this is pretty much what I'll be doing. So I'm just going to go through my method with you guys. I'm going to bring up the uh, notepads that I'm going to be writing on. So all, all you're going to need for this, if you, if, you, if you like what you see, all you need is just a notepad, uh, a pen. Um, I've got a Sharpie because so you guys can see. And just some sort of content in the language. So I've just got this, um, this guy, uh, Easy Russian, uh, which is it's beginner content. Um, but it is still native speakers speaking Russian fairly fast. Uh, so it's pretty, it's still like pretty authentic content. I don't, again, I don't really believe you need to spend loads of time with really basic content with people um, talking slowly. I think it's much better just to jump in the deep end. So anyway, here we go. We're going to go through it. Uh, I'm just going to show you what I do. So to start with, we're just going to play a little bit of the, um, of the audio. Okay, that's literally all. So first thing I'm going to do, and it's very helpful here, has it written out, is I'm just going to write down what he just said. So, pri yet. Doro gear through yeah. Uh, so that's that's it. Uh, like if you don't know the Russian alphabet, it doesn't really matter. But you know, uh, that sort of looks the same, right? That's that's all you really know. Um, so I've just written that out, and then I'll just say it out loud. <clears throat> so I'll just say "Privet Dorogia Druzia," and that's probably very bad pronunciation. So what I'll, do, I'll then do is I'll click back. Privet Dragi Druzia. And then I also correct the um, pronunciation as many times as I need. So, Privet Dragi Drizia. So, you see, you don't really pronounce that last E that is the way I was pronouncing it. So, I just make little adjustments to my pronunciation. Privet Dragi Drizia. Again, I don't really, I'm not writing down any, I'm not researching any of these vocab, you know. Um, what's good about this, like this kind of content, is you have the translation underneath. So, you know, Privyet, it says is hello, uh, Drizia is friends, and so 
Draghi is life. Dear. Uh, so, hello, dear friends. But I'm not massively fussed about um, chasing up, like, what means what exactly. Uh, in this instance, I do know that, that um, what Privyat means, and I know what Druzia means. Uh, I don't know what um, Doragi means, but it doesn't matter. That's, that's the real thing I'm getting at. You know, there's so much that I don't understand here. If I get another pen, you know, I don't understand what, um, why there's a Zia, you know, this ending here. I don't understand why there's that ending there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, all, all, I, all I do know is I know the word Drug is, means friends. I recognise friends there. And then it corresponds to, so I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, so it must be in the plural, which is in this instance, Druzia. You know, you don't really know. I could go away and research the word Druzia and it'd be like, oh, this is the vocative plural. It's, it's, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know if they have vocatives in, in Russian, but you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. All that matters is I just recognize that in this context, that word means that it's a uh, friend. Uh, so we'll do a few more examples and you'll get into the flow of what I'm trying to do here a bit more. Okay. Um, I dabro pojalovat v novi vifusk easy Russian. So again, like if you speak Russian, if you know Russian, like, you know, you'll know that I'm, I'm not pronouncing these words very well. Um, but all I'm doing is just getting it into my head, okay? So, i dobro. Bo lo vat v novi And easy Russian is just written in Roman characters. Russian. Okay. And uh, now I'm just going to let hear him say it. Okay. And then I'll just say it again. Easy Russian. Okay. I'm happy with that. Next one. Невероятно. And again, just just go quickly. You know, I'm not. I don't really care what bits. Obviously, like again, we've got the translation here. Um, and welcome to a new episode of Easy, Easy Russian. That's something that I should mention. Is is um, if you're early on in the stage, like make sure you have like access to a translation uh, to to what you're um, to what you're you're sort of studying. So, but again, like you know, I'm not too fussed about recognizing what's going on here. I mean, I know that Dobro Pozhalovat means like welcome because uh, you know you you just see that if you go to like uh, an airport you know so i recognize that uh v i know means in you know novi with pusk you know novi means new vipusk means episodes you know that's six that's just the same as the english right um but again you know these will be in the locative case or the you know or the genitive case or whatever it is you know because I've studied these kind of languages before where there's, um, where there are cases, you know, and, and, you know, it'll go into a different case depending on what the, you know, if it's in or of or from, you know, so I'll have a different ending. Again, I don't, I don't care about all that, any of that. All that matters is the, that's, that novi means new, vipusk means episode, you know, um, and it could be vipuski, vipuska, vipusk, you know, it could be, there could be a different ending on this all the time. So, you know, all that matters is I recognise the base words. And then easy Russian time, self-explanatory. Uh, okay. Okay, next one. So this, this one's quite interesting. See, before I kind of knew a lot of the words, you know, it's fairly um, self-explanatory. This one here. Nyevi, nye... V Roya Rayatni Puska Nevier, and I'm just going to say it again, Nevier Royatni. 
aus Pech wie Puska. Das ist ja auch Eisen. Ein großer See, it doesn't even sound recognizable to what I was saying. But then again, that, that, does, that doesn't matter. So again, this was quite interesting. Um, so obviously, means or how you say it. Obviously, this means incredibly successful, as you can see from the translation. And here, again, this is the perfect example, Vipuska. You know, we recognise we had that a minute ago with Vipusk. So, you know, and they both mean episode, as you can tell from here. So, again, this is what I mean, there's a different ending. There's an A on the end of the of Vipusk, where there wasn't here. Um, you know, that was in Vipusk, V Vipusk. You know, this is just Vipusk. You know, it's like... And there'll be a reason why it's got an A on the ends, you know, because it's the, norm the normative of the sentence or, you know, there'll be some reason for it. Um, you know, you, you could explain it grammatically. And if you're a beginner in the language, you'd spend several, you know, if you have been taught by someone who wasn't me, you'd spend several, several weeks, you know, studying why is that A at the end, you know. Um, it doesn't matter for us. It, for our sakes, this is, oh, it's a perfect example. Vip you recognise the, the word Vipusk. It's got an ending. That you don't really need to worry too much about. And again, these words, you know, they're not familiar to me. Um, I'm just going to, so I'm just going to take it as a block meaning to mean, you know, incredibly successful. Incredibly successful. I don't know if that means incredibly, that means successful, or the other way around. But again, for my purposes, it doesn't matter because all I'm doing is just getting exposure in the language, and that's all that matters. Okay. New page. Um, so this is the thing. With, this, this is the significant thing with this method. People might be watching that and, and going, like, what is this guy doing? How, how, is he, how does he think this is, you're going to learn Russian this way? What a stupid way to learn. I'll get, I'll get through a lot of pages, all right? That's the, this is the really key thing. Is, you know, what I'm doing here, I'm showing you on a micro scale. But I will just go through pages and pages and pages and pages of Russian like this. And, you know, those are little lessons you learnt, like, you know, just go back to it. Um, you know, oh, Vipusk, we recognise Vipusk. Here, you know, uh, these little lessons, they just build up the more you do it. Um, so, we'll go on to the next one now. Okay, в котором я рассказывал вам. Okay, again, you know, my pronunciation is not great, but it doesn't matter, we're just getting it down. I'm getting used to the language, I'm getting used to the sounds of the language, I'm getting used to the, the vocabulary, I'm getting used to the structure, and it's all just coming together in a really beautiful way. Raskayam, Raskazival, Raskazival, Van. Okay. So, which, in which I told you. Okay, so I recognise I here. That ya, ya means I. I've, I've seen that before, so I recognise it. I don't know what Raska, Raska Zuval means. I know I've seen it before. But I'm assuming that it's after the word... After the word I is usually a verb in Russian. That's just something I've observed from doing this. So that's probably going to mean to be told. Again, Raskaval. That's a separate ending that's for the you know, whatever tense it is, or whatever person it is, whatever number it is, it doesn't matter to me, all that matters is this means told, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go down here and start parsing it, uh, you know, it doesn't matter, and vam, I recognise that, that's, that, I've seen it before, so that means you, and then kataram, I've never seen that before, but we recognise v from, from earlier, if we go back to here, we had um, v novi vipusk in the new episode, Go back here. V kataram. Okay, so v must mean in, and kataram is the word after it. So again, I'm guessing, but I'm guessing probably correctly that this means which. So in which I told you is my guess. Now let's see how he says it. From 
So, v katram ya razkaziwal van. Again, I'm not getting perfect pronunciation, I'm not getting everything that he's saying correctly, but I'm just, um, I'm just sort of topping up sort of little things here and there that he, how he pronounces it. Um, and and we, when I'm pronouncing it, I'm not, not doing it so much so that my pronunciation is good. It's more so just, I just recognise how this is said in Russian. That's, that's, that's the name of it. Okay, next sentence. Okay, let's write that down. O neskolkich nes neskolkich knig knigach na ruskan. Okay, now you guys, you said, even if you've never studied Russian before, uh, you guys can sort of piece together, um, do a similar process here um, that I'm doing. So, you know, we look at the translation, the translation for this, or Nesko, Nesko, Gich, Knigach, Na, Ruskom. Uh, uh, about several books in Russian. Okay. Um, now we just have to have a look. Which word do you think would mean Russian? Um, now, uh, this might not work if you don't understand it, but this this word means Ruskom. Is, that's how you pronounce it, right? Ruskom. So, you know, that's probably going to be the word for Russian, right? That just kind of makes sense. Um, and then na, that means in... Uh, Yazuka means um, language. Um, and then Kniga, that means book. And again, I've just picked, I've, I've never looked up the word Kniga in my life. I've just, I've just recognised it from other examples where I've been able to infer it. And then Neskolkich, well, that's the only word left, so maybe it means several. Probably means several. And, you know, again, I don't like to get into the grammar too much, but that, you know, there's both a sort of huh sound at the end. Um, so that probably means, um, they, pro they probably go together to mean several books. That, that would make sense. Um, now I'm putting these words together here, Ruskom and Yizuka, but that have different endings. You know, why do they have different endings if, if they agree with each other? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, all that matters is I'm just, I'm just soaking up. I'm just observing things. And about, okay, again, like, you know, some of this might be wrong. It seems a bit weird, but o, o makes sense that that would mean about in this scenario. Um, okay, and now let's just hear him say it again. Okay, a neskolkich knigich knigach na ruskom yizuka. Yizuka. Again, like, you know, I'm just picking up small things here and there, but to just get it into my head. Okay, next page, next page. You see what I mean, guys? Like, it's quick, it's quick. I'm not, I'm not hanging about. I'm just getting through as much of it as I can in almost as, as short a space as I can. Well, you know, I'm, I'm writing down the sort of English here to, to show you how I do it. But when I'm, when I'm doing it on my own, I, I, I don't even sort of write down my observations about the English. I just write it down. How does he say it? Okay, next one, next one. And just constantly repetition. Uh, and you can just see how much this builds up. Okay, we're going to do a few more so that you just really get a sense of, of kind of the cyclical nature of this progress, um, of what, what's going on here, this process. Um, you know, you slowly begin to, to sort of join the dots of things that we've seen earlier. Okay, next sentence. Vdoch, vdoch no vil moich kolleg ob Bratistia. Okay, none of these words I really recognise. Vdoch, Burgo, Vdoch, Ni, Vdoch, Novil, Vdoch, Vdoch, Novil, Moich, Colleg, O. Bra. Bra. Tit. Tit. 
Let's see. Yeah. Okay. What the hell does this mean? Okay, inspired my colleagues to contact me. Okay, I don't recognize any of these words. So what, so what do I do in this case? Um, well, you know, the great thing about Russian, this is a great example of it, is that there are actually a lot of words have been adopted from French. Um, and so often, or, and English, to be honest. So a lot of, a lot of words, they would be spelt, you know, in, in a, to match like the Russian um, pronunciation, but they, they're from um, French words that we, or, or English words, or French words that we also have in English. So the word colleague here, you might think, you know, what words means colleague? Um, but actually, if, if we sort of um, put that into English, into Latin characters, colleague, oh, colleague, there we go. Um, you know, the, the Russians just spell things in a more, like, consistent way, um, in a more, uh, um, in a more, uh, what's the word, like, literal way. Um, okay, so we know that means colleague, great. Um, what else can we make sense of? Moich. Well, m I know that moi means my, and my colleague is, is, um, is in the English translation, so... What what's the likelihood that that means my? Probably quite a lot. Again, you know the, the what's going on here. There's an ch sound there. There's not there's not one there. You know that doesn't make sense. But they those two must go together. Um, and then here's the situation. So we've got two words left. We've got vdoch novil and obratitia. You know. And you might say, okay, how do you work that out? Here's the great thing, guys. I don't, I don't know which word means contacts and which word means inspires. But one, one of them will mean inspired, one of them will mean contacts. We don't need to worry about that. All we need to worry about is just getting down what we can, which is this bit here. This bit, you know, we understand. Great. Let's not worry about the rest of it. Let's not complicate ourselves more than we need to be for now. Um, okay, we're going to do one more example. Okay. Okay. What words do I recognize from this? Um, Munya. That means me, right? I just know that. Um, ko. No idea what that means. Uh, Zaprasam. Stelat. And we've got ask me to make. See, this is, the, the, this is the thing. You run into areas where you actually don't recognise very much. So, you know, leave it. I don't, I don't know what, what that, the rest of that means. Just go on to the next sentence. Pro, this is the last one, guys. Prochoje video o muzyke na uskom Okay guys, this is a really interesting one. Um, so what do you recognize from here? Video. Video, it, that's, that's, that's literally just it, spelt in Russian characters. Now this is great. Oh, where do we recognize that from? Well, if we go back only one page, where do we have another example of or? Here, or of several, about several books. We, we guessed that about meant, that uh, oh meant about, and what do we have here? Um, or if you look at the English translation, it says um, about or about music in Russian. So ah, oh, that must mean about. That sort of confirms our suspicions that are, after all this time, meant about. Um, and then 
if we transliterate that, that if we just pronounce it, that just says musica. Well, that obviously means music. Again, why is there an E on the end? It doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares? We'll just have that as a set phrase. Our musica means uh, about music. And na ruskom yazica. Um, don't we recognise that? We literally had that sentence earlier. Literally uh, one page ago. Na ruskom yazica. Um, brilliant. Okay. We, you know, we start recognising this. Um, what else have we got? Okay, the only, the only words, you know, this has just been, you know, just guesswork. The only word that we genuinely don't know is pochoje. Um, okay, well, similar video. It's, it's next to the word video. Similar, it probably means similar. Um, so there we go. Brilliant. You know, um, and you just keep, you just keep doing this, all right? I'm going to show you guys my, the rest of my journal. Um, but that is really the, the key to this, is you just, we just keep doing this over and over again, loads and loads of times. And, you know, well, I haven't learned very much from, from doing just those sentences, but you just go into a flow state with it. If you do this enough, if you really just keep writing down, down stuff, hmm, what do I recognise? How do I pronounce this? You know, I kind of stopped doing the pronunciation um, after a while because I, I felt a bit like I was embarrassing myself because the... You know, my pronunciation is not very good. Um, but, you know, that's, that's all it is. It's just getting it into your head. Getting used to writing down the characters. That, that, that incredible block is just like writing things down. You know, and get, getting familiarity with, with seeing the characters together and writing them together. That's a huge obstacle. Um, it's just doing that. So, yeah. Um, just building up that consistency. And you, you start recognising stuff so quickly. Like, how much have we recognised here? We literally had this, you know, Naruskom Yazuka, we've had that already, about, we've had already, you know, um, it all just adds up so quickly. Um, you know, Vipusk, we've had that word twice. V, we've seen that twice. E, we haven't talked about, but that means and, you know, you see that, we see that all the time, you know. Um, and it just builds up so quickly. And if you start just, if you start just building up, like, a, a couple of, um, if you just start doing this like a few times, you know, you start building up, you start seeing the, the it all come together really quickly. Um, I mean, that's a really, and, and the great thing about Russian as well is like, you can just, you can just sort of, um, because it's, it, but it has lots of borrowings from, from other European languages, you know, you start building up quite quickly. I mean, that's quite an interesting example, you know. If you, if you, um, if you do read Cyrillic, which, you know, I don't you probably must be very confused if you don't. Um, uh, you know, like, if you see that, you'd think, what the fuck is that? But then you really, if you, you know, it's like, YouTuber, what the fuck does that mean? Ah, oh, it just means, it's just YouTube in Russian characters, you know. Um, just, oh, just after a while, oh, I mean, I hope I'm getting through to you guys, after a while, it just, it's just like, ah, oh, it just, it's not as much of a mystery as you think it is, you know. Um, yeah, uh, so, anyway, guys, it really is that simple. Um, that's, that's, that's all I do to learn Russian. And yes, I'm still at a very basic level. Um, you know, I mean, but, but I hope even going through it now, like, I hope you see that I've just built up this familiarity. Honestly, I've done nothing else to, to, to learn Russian. You know, I, I know what a, I know different sort of, I've studied languages where in depth where I've learned the grammar of case systems, you know, so, and Russian is, is a case, has these case systems, has declensions, rather. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm more familiar than I might otherwise be. But honestly, I've never looked up any tables for, for Russian grammar, you know, at all. You know, I, I don't know what declensions they really have. I know they had the accusative, the dative, they had the, the instrumental, you know. But I, don't, I couldn't really tell you, like, I couldn't really list it off to you. I couldn't recite, um, you know, um, different nouns, like, with with Latin, if you ever studied Latin, it's like, oh, it's um, you know, servus, servu, servus, serve, servum, ser, ser we, ser wo, ser wo, you know, like you just kind of you just recite all these different puella, 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 um, you know, I, I frankly I've, I've almost forgotten it, puella, puella, puellam, puellae, puellae, puella, you know, like, but I've been I've been taught that way of doing it. Don't bother with it for Russian. I just don't need to, um, you know. It's just a waste of time. 
will there come a point where I will want to get a better understanding of of um, of how the case systems work, so that I can I can you know sort of get a better understanding of, of how to speak the language? Sure, of course there will. Um, but even then, you know, there, there will be a point where I have to do that. But the the real task at the moment is just getting familiarity with the words, getting familiarity with how the sentence structure works. You don't need you don't need um, to understand the declension system, to understand how the how the thing how the sort of sentences fit together. You know, that's much more important. And you know, even when I do get to the point, which I will, of of studying declension tables and, and like being able to say, oh, that's in the vocative case, that's in the genitive case, that's in the nominative case. You know, even if, when I get to that point, um, it's not going to be very important. It's not going to be as important as the content I've consumed. That's going to be far more important. So anyway, like, I mean, I'm not necessarily advertising an exact system here because everyone learns different, differently. You know, I think most people would, would find um, just writing down, transcribing Russian incredibly boring. I happen to find it very exciting, you know. So, so you know, you might be watching this and thinking, you know, this guy's insane, like, how, how does he how does he find it enjoyable? But it doesn't, you know, it might not be this exact thing, but, but that, the point is, you know, what will be the same for you is that you don't need just hours of just slogging away learning grammar. If you're only a beginner, you know, you don't really need that at all. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope, and I hope, what I really hope is that um, I'll be so happy about is that I get through to you about just how quickly the brain recognises patterns. You know, how quickly you recognise, oh, oh, that means about, or how well the brain can infer, you know, musica, that, ooh, that, that sounds similar to the word music in English. Video, maybe that means video, you know, ruskom, that sounds a bit like the word Russian, you know. Na, you know, na ruskom in Russian, na yuskom ruskom yazika in the Russian language. You know, it also fits together. Um, and I, I truly believe like the brain is is a success mechanism, you know. And even if you think you're not good at languages, like, you know, this might sound, sound so silly and just in, in, ill-informed to say, but you can speak English perfectly well or whatever your ta- target language is, whatever your mother tongue is, you can speak it perfectly well. You know, your brain can recognise patterns and you can teach it to do it again with this method. So anyway, guys, you know, like, I'm not sure, I'm not sort of selling this, you know, there's no, there's no sort of incentive for me, for you to follow this, this path. Do, do as you will, you know, um, but I just want to show you guys what's possible if you learn in a more organic way. So anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.